Hello and welcome to another Junior Taki production. This is Mr. T. Thank you for tuning in. You are watching video number one under the topic Algebraic Expressions Grade 10 Mathematics. We move straight to the first question. Which two consecutive integers does the irrational number lie between? What irrational number are we dealing with? We are dealing with the irrational number 69. How is it irrational? If you say square root of 69, you're going to get 8 comma something. Although we're not required to use a calculator. The question is, how then do you get the values? How then do you get the integers? You need to apply your knowledge of perfect squares. So the question to ask is, what two perfect squares are closest to the number 69? The two perfect squares are your 64 and your 81 respectively. But then how do you present your solution? You can say A is less than the square root of 69, which is less than B, where your A and B are those two consecutive integers. So we then use our knowledge of perfect squares through saying the square root of 64 is less than the square root of 69, which is less than the square root of 81. But simplifying that, we get 8 less than the square root of 69 less than 9. We then conclude in words through saying, therefore, the square root of 69 lies between the integers 8 and 9, respectively. We move on to the second question. In the second question, we want to literally apply the same principle, but now dealing with the cube root of 69. So you ask yourself, what two perfect cubes lie closest to 69? The two will be the cube root of 64 and the cube root of 125. Same presentation, we say A is less than the cube root of 69, less than B. We move ahead and say the cube root of 64 is less than the cube root of 69, less than the cube root of 125. Simplifying that, we get 4 less than the cube root of 69, less than 5. We then conclude and say, therefore, the cube root of 69 lies between 4 and 5 as our consecutive integers. We move on to the next question. In the next question, they say express each number as a common fraction or in the form A over B. What are we given? We are given 0, 0,3 and it's recurring. That dot on top of 3 is saying it's recurring. And if you were to expand that, you're going to get 0, 0,3333333 up to infinity. So to get the fraction that is equivalent to that 0, 0,3 recurring, equations come in handy. So we're going to start by saying let x, let your x be equivalent to that recurring decimal 0, 0,3. And we make that our first equation. Because our decimal fraction, our decimal is recurring after every tenth, we multiply by 10. So we're going to say equation 1, the whole of equation 1 times 10. If we do that, we're going to say 10 times x. So we are saying 10 times x, that 10 times that x, that gives us 10x is equals to 3 comma 3 as well. So as we multiply the whole equation 1 by 2, we're going to get 10x is equal to 3 comma 3 recurring, giving us or giving rise to the second equation. What then do we do after here? We're going to say equation 2 minus the first equation. Equation 2 minus the first equation, getting 10x minus x is equal to 3 comma 3 minus 0 comma 3, all of which are recurring. Simplifying that, we're going to get 9x is equal to 3. Therefore, it's now a simple linear equation, grade 8 type. You divide both sides by 9, you get 9x over 9 is equal to 3 over 9. You get x is equal to 1 over 3. We move on to the last question. In our last question, we're given 0, 0,27 and it's recurring. The 2 and the 7 is recurring. So if I'm to expand that, that will give us 0, 0,272727. Same principle, 
let that recurring decimal be equal to x. So I'll say let x be equal to 0, 0.27 recurring. And that's my first equation. I'm going to say because it's recurring after two digits, it's to two decimal places, that means you multiply by 100. So equation 1 multiplied by 100. And if I do that, I'm going to get 100x is equals to 27,27. And again, it's recurring, making the second equation. I repeat the same process. Equation 2 minus equation 1, and that will give us 100x minus, and x is equals to 27,27 minus 0,27. And again, it is recurring. Simplifying that, we're going to get 99x is equals to 27. Then simplifying that or dividing by 99, both sides, we're going to get 99x over 99 is equals to 27 over 99. Simplifying that, we get our x to be equal to 3 over 11. You can always verify your answer through punching or pressing 3 over 11 in your calculator and pressing the SD button so that you can confirm that you're getting 0, 0.272727. I hope you enjoyed watching that. Look out for the next video. Bye-bye.